Well, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, there fantastic hi well ladies and gentlemen good afternoon and good evening and uh good morning however you are in the world and on instagram as well i um, want to thank you so much for coming on to the late one um and today is a very um interesting well every day is an interesting day i must say every day is an interesting day every day there's something up um we are in the period of of pandemic coronavirus and uh and one of the things which is very interesting about this time is that there's positive things which is happening, I would say, around. And in light of the all positive things which are happening around, we are seeing total celebration and total um, adoration for different services, uh, different services like the NHS essential services. I went to the supermarket today and key workers there, essential service, key person, because guess what? We have got to be fed. Now, for those who are coming on, on YouTube, uh, Instagram, uh, what I'll say is that um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess Mr. Anthony Francis um, will start this petition as to how we should keep a day for the NHS and essential services. If you want to see that, you'll have to go over to the YouTube, the Facebook page, Silburn uh, City. However, at the same time, you can also listen in as well, which is no problem, and ask any questions to Anthony. Now, let me just bring in Anthony francis and to make sure that we are good and he's coming in in a few seconds mr francis how are you doing sir uh very well thank you and have um thanks for having me again yes on, uh, good well you're a resident now you're a resident now so you know it's a normal thing which is it <laughs> anthony we are living as you know in a very interesting time and uh while we're living through this interesting time we are seeing lots of uh developments as well developments on a positive level while at the same time we recognize that there's been uh, very negative things with the amount of death but something which has been happening uh ladies and gentlemen every thursday in the uk uh, wherever you are every thursday in the uk at 8 p.m i think about the fourth week now or third week i think about the fourth week now we're mm -hmm. on where we go outside of our houses apply social distancing and we applaud the nhs it went first for the nhs for about one or two weeks and then it incorporated the essential service essential service like the, the the key persons the cleaners and everybody else who are on the front line i understand from my workplace that i'm a key worker because i i've got to still go to court but remotely so they said a key worker but the, what is happening is this adoration and this uh, period of actually clapping now anthony uh started something recently and it has been in a couple of papers whereby he started a, a petition and this petition is to somehow try to keep try to make a day for key workers and nhs anthony you go ahead shoot yeah well as you um, rightly say uh selborne over the last sort of four maybe i think five weeks now there mm. has been this um uh on a thursday evening at eight o'clock uh, people have been coming out of their homes and they've been applauding uh, the NHS and key workers and really celebrating the fact that they are, they are the frontline defence for us and have yes. been recognised as, su as such uh, during this pandemic. So mm. really what I wanted to do was to, to really uh, um, make sure that that um, sentiment wasn't forgotten uh, when the clapping stops, because ultimately yeah. we do know that um, in the next sort of coming months, uh, when things try to go back to some sense of normality, um, you know, the, the, the Thursday evening um, clapping probably won't continue in its, in its current form. Yes, yes. Well, um, the, the petition, as it sets out here, um, ladies and gentlemen, it says, my wife has been a nurse for over 30 years. My parents are 97 and 94, and I rely on three carers a day, like many have seen firsthand how life changing their work is, and I'm forever grateful for the care they provide. Tell us what was the rationale, and uh, because everybody's seen this, but you made one step further. I know I found out about it. Well, you sent it to me, but then what highlighted it was when I saw a, a newspaper said Catford Man start this, and I said it was Catford Man, and I realized it was you, <laughs> Catford Man. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah, what was the key thing that actually spurred you on, Anthony? Well, if I'm really honest, the, the key thing, there, there were two key things. One was there was a post 
on a social media site called LinkedIn, which is a business post, fun, um, funnily yeah. enough. And on that particular post, a gentleman had put down that uh, going forward next year, he didn't want to see any awards for celebrities and mm. you know, the usual sorts of pattern on the back for people in the media. He wanted some sort of recognition um, for the NHS and key workers. And yeah. when, I was, when I was responding back to that, uh, I was about to type in and say, you know, that's a really great initiative um, to have some awards for these um, individuals. Um, yeah. It would also be nice if we could do something to have a more permanent um, um, way of acknowledgement by having a, uh, an NHS and key workers day. And then suddenly it dawned on me that actually, why don't I start a petition to actually get that day um, put in place? Um, so that was really the whole crux of how it came about. And obviously being somebody who whose parents um, do benefit and have benefited from having carers regularly now for the last number of years. In fact, if I didn't, if my parents didn't have carers, they would be in a nursing home um, and all that goes with it. So I'm in truly grateful for the support that we've had from the carers who look after my family, mm. my, my father. But also, as you say in the introduction, my wife is a is a nurse and has been one and has been uh, has been one uh, for the last thirty years. So it's not uh, for me unnatural to sort of know and talk about these sorts of issues. Mm. And and also um, one of the key things about it and the world world of the the, the NHS and uh, of course and not just the NHS. We're talking about key workers, but the NHS is that a we all benefit from them. I mean, my two children were born at at um, in Lewisham Hospital. I was born in Jamaica, my wife was born in Jamaica, but we have benefited uh, immensely from their services. Boris Johnson, the prime minister, and as you will put it out that while the government has cut a lot of <laughs> the, the, the funding, but he has actually attributed the whole thing to having these persons. But even the lady who he, he gave a lot of accolades from a New Zealand lady, she was interviewed and she simply just said this, I would do the same thing to anyone. It wasn't anybody different. You know, and, and it shows the wealth and the essence of the NHS, Anthony. Yeah, well, indeed, yeah. I mean, you know, as I mentioned, um, my wife's a, a, an NHS nurse and has been so for 30 years, and she will treat any patient the same as she would treat any other patient. I mean, there are no special patients, you know, and everybody who comes in to the NHS who she has seen or any other mm. um, medical practitioner has seen, there's no favoritism, they don't see color. They don't see um, race. They don't see rich or poor. They see a patient who needs care and attention. Yeah. And I think that's all that that lady saw when she was treating Boris Johnson. And, you know, the recognition that he gave in terms of saying that her and one of the other gentlemen um, saved, you know, were directly responsible for saving his life, uh, to me, speaks volumes because you know, it wasn't so long ago that Boris Johnson, amongst other members of his, of his cabinet, Mm. Both against the NHS to actually getting a pay rise. Yes, yes. Somebody just said a while ago, why not petition petition for them to have low cost housing um, for the key workers and uh, nurse. So I guess that is the second one that you may have to start, Anthony. Was just let that one. Well, well, yeah. well, to be honest, uh, the whole purpose, the whole purpose of the uh, of the petition, uh, Selborn, yeah. is really to sort of change the narrative around what we talk about or what the or what is generally talked about with regard to the NHS and um, e-services so you know you talk you talk about the the petition that or that someone has started to try and get better housing um, for those key workers I think once once now that we're talking about the NHS and now that people have seen just how much of a service we depend upon some of these you know all of these individuals I think what will what will hopefully happen as a consequence of this is the narrative around well how do we see NHS people? How do we pay them? Um, how do we look after them? All of this will come in the mix. And I hope that it will start to um, produce a more expansive discussion that will lead to change and benefits for them going forward. Yes. And, and also, the, 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 big, the second question now is this. If successful, what effect do you think you will have for the NHS? Before you answer that, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for coming on. Um, I've got Anthony Francis here who created a petition wanting to see a, a national day of acknowledgement for NHS and key workers. For those on Instagram, I want to thank you. You're not seeing Anthony, but you can hear his wonderful voice. He's a, he's a gangster dude. I'm just kidding. That's just me just saying that. Um, if you want to see it later, you can, it will be on YouTube and you can actually go now over Facebook 
so you can watch it and ladies and gentlemen on facebook if you just press share as well and ask any questions of anthony as well he's a project director so he always try to fix things anthony if successful what do you think it will have for the nhs <clears throat> if successful it will have a profound effect because um, the nhs will now be right front and center in terms of the negotiations that take place within both the parliament with regards to the opposition and the current um, conservative party and what that will do is rather than now there be this discussion around you know will the nhs get um, be looked after each you know each year in terms of money that's needed for the services equipment etc it will now really be a question of not when we can give them the, the, the you know these things but you know really a question of when is that going to be delivered to them so yeah. i'm hoping that the whole narrative around discussion and the and, and what is talked about for the nhs and key works will, will shift and as a consequence of that as well Selbo, and i hope that the respect will also come back into the profession that i think has been missing for a number of years now because it just seems to always be a punch bag between the opposition parties with regards to funding each year yes and the nhs right in the middle like um being politicized and some somehow I believe that after even the recent one with um, Jeremy Hunt for a period of time, they just felt, I think the feedback was coming true. It felt a bit battered, like, you know, just doing this. But yet at the same time, as we can see with the whole coronavirus pandemic, they're just selfless. They're not thinking about themselves. They're just going in the front line there. And we have seen the unfortunate cases of many of them who have died so far. Um, you know, well, but I want to ask you, sorry, go on, Anthony. Yeah. I was going to say, well, this, this has been a really unfortunate consequence of the NHS and key workers putting themselves first without thinking of, you know, themselves in terms of, um, I've got to look after the, you know, my patients. So the yeah. key thing here is that, the, you know, as that lady said, she didn't see Boris Johnson from anybody else. She just saw a patient who came in and needed to be treated. Yeah. And I, you know, this is the reason why I'm hoping to try and raise the profile of the NHS and key workers in this way by having a national day because it will then mean that each year just as we do for other national holidays where we recognize and celebrate uh, those particular holidays for, you know for what they are the NHS and key workers will always be there and, and we won't take for granted the sacrifices that people have in the service have made and who have lost their lives I mean in any other profession Selborne you know, people wouldn't go to work and lose their lives the way that they have done in this mm -hmm. pandemic through the NHS and the key workers. And we really need to recognise and, and and support and have some way of marking the fact that these um, individuals are really our first line of defence whenever there's a, um, a crisis. Yeah, it is good what you're doing, because what you're doing is a part of the bigger picture. What a person like Captain Tom is doing was raised, um, I think, I think it was 30 million or so. And as a result of that, many people are now coming out and actually doing different things. There's a little girl who recently just got inspired to start making these uh, face masks. You know, uh, is that my feedback? Anyhow, she started making these face mark masks for for the NHS. Mm. Fortunately, I turned out that I know her mother. Her mother's on my my Facebook uh, page friend list. So we're trying to see if we can do that. So everybody's doing their bit, and what you're doing now you are somewhat seeking to gain some level of respect back for the nhs which has been lost but i'm going to ask you this question as a project director and a person who look at these things systematically where did you think or do you think that the, the respect or the the, the the profession got sort of messed up along the way well i think you know to be honest i think over the last i would say at least 10 years now i mean um as I, you know as i mentioned it right at the beginning uh, the introduction to the show my wife's been a, um, a nurse for 30 years and you know during that time i think the profession in, in general has gradually um, in terms of how they are seen but also how they are perhaps appreciated has gone down and down and down over the years and as you mentioned it's become more of a political discussion each year around the nhs yeah talking about you know how much money we're, we're going to provide for them and things and things around you know the nhs are a really valuable resource well we know all that but yet the nhs staff still get paid relatively um a, a low salary as well as the key workers doing comparison to other professions so really what i'm looking for is a certain amount of parity let's let's say if we see that the nhs workers as we are doing now every thursday and we're applauding them and we're saying how much we rely on them well let's actually also show them that appreciation by paying them what they're worth and also recognizing them nationally each year 
by having a, um, an annual day that says, you know, this is a this is a, a way of recognising the NHS and our key workers who do all of these things for us selfishly. So that's really the purpose of it. So therefore, what you're saying is like that song in Jamaica that says, "Action, not a bag amount, not just clapping." That's why the topic that we have after the clap, you know, what next after the clap what next and that is the, the key thing ladies and gentlemen i'll be posting the the link for the petition in the in the comments page so you can actually move towards that i want to ask you this next question and it's do you see any change in the future and how the public and based on what has been going on now whereby somewhat the nhs has been on the front line do you see any change uh in the future in how the public view the nhs after this well i certainly hope so i mean you know it would it would be remiss if all of these people who come out on a thursday evening and have been clapping suddenly then just um retreat back into their homes and simply forget what they were doing because you know they every week now for the last four or five weeks there's been hundreds if not thousands of people who have been coming out they've been clapping you've had the prime minister you've had um the royalty in terms of the royal family so, you know, what I hope is going to happen is that, you know, these individuals, these people, these families will start saying to themselves, you know what, actually, uh, we need to now show some appreciation and actually will go out of their way now to actually show that appreciation for mm -hmm. what the NHS do. But don't forget as well, Sobon, on, a, on, a, on, a, on another note, you know, you, we do have NHS workers, um, sadly, who also, you know, um, are paramedics whose services, when they go to um, a scene, they're actually abused, they're actually attacked. Yes. You know, so, you know, you, what you like to think now is that actually going forward, all of these services and individuals and the support they, that they do for us will really be appreciated now for what they do. And that actually people will start talking about them in a way that perhaps before they had been. Yeah. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to get your feedback and your comments as well, even those on um, Instagram and uh, Facebook, also YouTube. Um, what's your view of the clapping every Thursday? Uh, you know, some people, you know, there's some dissenting voices and saying, well, at this rate, might as well we have uh, a, a day for every other person. We're going to end up just jumping on a sort of bandwagon. Uh, you know, so many people have their dissenting voices, but, you know, it'd be good to know what persons think. I think everyone have respect for all key workers. That is what someone said. I think everyone, oh, I need to add, and even though we're talking about the NHS, but Anthony made it very clear in the petition and it, it says uh i'm now calling for a dedicated nhs and key workers day to make sure they're recognized and celebrated every year so just to put that into context when we mention the nhs now we're talking about key workers right anthony that's what we're that's saying right. yeah i mean you know so i think really the all of the service all of the nhs and key workers who we've been reliant on during this pandemic the ones who you know, when we go to the corner shop, that you know, the, the porters who work in the hospital, the NHS workers themselves, the medics, the the you know, the, the drivers who provide us with the the food that we need each each day that we can go and that we can go and access. These individuals, you know, these are the key workers who perhaps sometimes we just we just make take for granted that stuff arrives and things happen. And I just think it's it's it will be really appropriate and and also a way of recognising. Because don't forget as well, we've had. In the public sector, we've had bus drivers who have who have lost their lives, mm. as well as nurses and doctors. So these have been the people who have really been at the at the, the forefront, who have actually given their services to us, and 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 in, and in the consequence of their service, have actually died. So we really need to show our appreciation and to remember and recognise the efforts that they do. Yes, the government role. Government should now. I mean, many people are saying they need to do lots of things. What is the government should be doing now? Well, I think certainly once the pandemic is over, there's going to be a bit of a post-mortem. We know that. Um, yes. because clearly, um, one of the, my concerns is that there have been, I think, to date, somewhere around the region of 220 or over 200 NHS workers who have died. Now, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I would hate to say this, but clearly a lot of those I would feel were probably deaths that were avoidable if the staff had the appropriate um, PPE Yes. before they attended any of the patients. So I think it's fair to say that, you know, some of these individuals have gone in to do their daily work and they haven't had the proper um, clothing. They haven't had really the proper ammunition to be able to actually 
fight against the, 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 the pandemic themselves. And they've yeah. been going into battle on our behalf without any protection. So I think that, you know, there will be that there will be that discussion around what went wrong, why we didn't have proper protection, why it was so late in actually the distribution, why the distribution has been so poor and uncoordinated. All of those things will happen um, after the um, pandemic has passed. Yeah. And I think also that uh, the narrative around, well, where do we go now in terms of what do we do for the NHS? How do we make sure that they are actually unserved and that they actually are well paid is going to be the next thing because, you know, I think it's always been mentioned in the past, if we were to put up um, tax by 1p, that people would support that to increase the pay for, for example, for NHS workers. Yes. And I think something like that might now be looked upon purely because, um, you know, the situation has now changed in how we now see the NHS. And and, and there's, a, there's another point that people are talking about as well, and, and that's in regard to the, the diversity. I mean, um, through the Windrush factor, uh, many persons believe that persons of black and minor ethnic hasn't got that sort of uh, from sort of respect there's, there's another level of respect there uh, as, as persons have been talking about as well um should there be some sort of talk towards that as to deal with the level of uh, equality and our respect within the, the level of racism factor oh well you know so there's a different subject i just well i that. think at the end of the day the nhs workers and those who have lost their lives either black or white Mm. Need to be actually seen as um, as the same. I don't think we should say there's been any particular preference one or the other. I understand your question. There has been a quite a high proportion of the BAME community who have sadly lost their lives. I think this is probably reflected by the fact that they are in the forefront. The doctors and yeah. nurses who have who have been actually treating these individuals themselves have been from our community or have been from the BAME community. So therefore, proportionately, it's therefore not surprising that they have maybe been um, more affected. Um, however, in saying that, I, I should just preference that by, by mentioning as well, there has been some discussion around the fact that there might be some other factors in terms of why um, the Bain community have been so badly affected. Um, and, and, you know, for example, things to do with diabetes, things to do with high blood pressure, things like this. But I think, it, so, you know, yeah, going back to your question, I think they're all seen as the same NHS, you know, black or white. Yeah. Well, Gwendolyn, Gwendolyn Turner actually said uh, uh, in this point, question, frontline healthcare workers also deserve hazard pay during this pandemic. Now, you answer that, and I've got my views with that right there. Frontline healthcare workers also deserve hazard pay during this pandemic. What do you think about that? Hazard, well, hazard pay. Yeah, I mean, I think if we were to give them hazard pay, like in some other industries, I think it might detract from the bigger picture in terms of overall pay. Um, you know, it, because they're dealing with a pandemic, I don't think necessarily they should suddenly, you know, get extra percent, you know, this month or next month. I think that overall, the NHS uh, workers are underpaid. And I think it should be looked at in the round as to yeah. how to make sure that they are properly compensated. I mean, look, I mean, I heard yesterday, for example, that one lady who um, who has come from come from overseas to work in the NHS is actually having to pay, um, I think, some sort of level of um, taxes or some sort of payment uh, because she's here working in the NHS. And yes. I, I thought to myself, how how bizarre that somebody who is actually working in the NHS, who happens to have come over with her family, has to pay for the privilege of actually doing her own job. So I think. Yeah. In the round, we need to look at you know the whole pay structure and the sort of benefits that the NHS workers and key workers are entitled to. Not just look at it, look upon it as a one-off hazard payment. Right, and 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 the key point there, what I was about to talk about, we we'll talk about a hazard payment, but it is their duty, it's their job. It's like the police when you when you have a situation where there's like seven seven or whatever, and they go to the front line. It is just a normal course of their day isn't it? And you mentioned the point with rightly, it is better to give them a, a hold, holistic, proper package. That's right. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's no point looking at this in a piecemeal way. In a piecemeal way. What, what we want is a, is a, is a, is a proper grown up discussion that looks at all of the aspects of the NHS, um, how the NHS staff are, um, are treated, you know, even down to parking, even down to just basically yeah. being able to actually get to their place of work and be able to park without having to pay 
um, various, you know, tech, uh, tech yeah. you know, it, it's basic things like this. I mean, if I work for a corporation, they normally provide me with, uh, um, with, with parking bays. Yes. If I go to work and I happen to be in the police service or any other profession that requires some sort of level of risk, I'm given proper um, materials or ammunition or protective equipment to look after myself. Yeah. So, you know, I think the whole discussion really needs to be in the round um, once this is over as to how we can properly look after our NHS and key workers, but more importantly, recognize them each year for the work and the sacrifice that they do. Yes, yes. So, so it seems somehow that the, the public is going to play a fundamental role in preserving this NHS. You have seen uh, mm -hmm. other persons are now collecting money for different reasons. And, and, and I think what we don't want is the lockdown is lifted, which of course is not going to happen now. And then everybody's just gone about their business and, and forget it. The, the key point here now, do you think this pandemic will have a positive uh, of a negative impact? And I'm just looking at our negative impact on future NHS recruitments. Because that's that's the thing, because everybody's saying, come now, come now, we need you. We all need you now. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I think it, well, it, it probably might have a positive and negative. So for example, a lot of people will see the number of deaths and think to themselves, you know what, um, maybe that's not the profession I want to be in because clearly the staff have not been given the right the right um, protective equipment and yeah. therefore a number of them have lost their lives. Equally, you'll, you know, with the, if they, if, if the, if um, the government provides a proper um, pay package for the NHS, it could be seen as being quite a, uh, a beneficial career path to go into mm -hmm. if you know, the public get behind and actually, you know, that appreciation and respect is maintained by the public going forward and they have this national annual um, recognition day, then yeah. I think that's the sort of thing that would make people think, you know what, I actually want to get involved and work for the NHS because they're, they're an organisation that is really um, respected and appreciated by the public. Right, right, right. So therefore, so therefore, the the way forward now, as as we see now, is to really to get this petition going. How much is it now, Anthony? Uh, I think it's just over the excuse me, just over two and a half thousand. So it's been going for the last. Uh, if it's, it's only been going for four about four or five days. So yeah. within, within four or five days, we've had two and a half thousand people have signed the petition. It's been featured in a number of um, um, local newspapers. It's in fact, it's, in fact, today it's on the front cover of the South London Press. Yes. So, I think with that sort of support and other people getting behind it and sharing the petition and actually, um, you know, asking their MPs, their councillors, any um, celebrities who may see this or read the newspaper to get involved. Because, you know, at the end of the day, without the support of the public behind this, the petition won't go anywhere. And what we don't want is to is to lose that momentum now that the, the public have suddenly seen, um, you know, the real the real face of the NHS in terms of how dependent we are upon them. Yeah, and some of some of the reasons why people are signing, some people say, "Yes, let's continue forward. We are on to a winning streak now. Without NHS and the key workers, this country would have gone under." These are some of the comments which I've mentioned there on Instagram. More people have joined. The NHS people have empathy and passion to help others. So what they're talking about is that it's going to be a, a turning around if anything led by the people and the pressure will of course be put on the government to ensure that there's fairness as much as possible until correct without the support of the public then this this petition isn't really going to go very far and you know as we've seen with captain tom all it needs is one or two celebrities to get behind mm. a particular petition and really you can go from zero to hero in a matter of days i mean don't forget that captain tom's original um uh, target was one thousand pounds he's yes. done 25 million in two weeks and that has been as a direct consequence of the public celebrities and others who have suddenly seen the cause and have decided you know what we want to make this something that we can get behind and as a consequence now there's the there's a petition out for him to be knighted so you know all it needs is for you know a, a, num a number of people to see this get behind it celebrities and you know you can be sure that this will suddenly land on the government's table and then we'll see if all this talk about Boris Johnson saying that, you know, they are a vital service and Sadiq Khan saying that they are, you know, they're committed, he's committed to the NHS, is just, is, is talk, or will it actually uh, manifest itself in action? Yes, that's, that's interesting. Now, it's interesting you mentioned about Captain Tom, and I want to sidetrack with, with a, a joke, because Captain Tom has walked around his house 
uh, or wherever it is, and he raised about 27 to 30 million or so. Uh, Richard Branson, they said he's trying to raise some money for Virgin Network or Virgin Business because the plane is going down. And there's a spoof going around that Boris Johnson said he needs to walk around his house <laughs> in order to, to raise the money because it's there. As well. Anyhow, that's, that's something. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, that's, a, that's a conversation for another time. But I think, you know, at the end of the day, Richard Branson is, a, is meant to be a, 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 a multi billionaire. Yes. And, uh, if, if he needs any, any, any funds, uh, the, the, um, you know, the, um, the, the British taxpayers aren't the people to come and, to come and bail him out. And, and that is so correct. I think we've got to stand our foot down. Not much. Um, Gwendolyn Turner, how long will the process take to submit an act to the past some sort of bill to pay NHS workers more opposed awarding them an extra bonus plus an act of gratitude? Uh, of course, another question to answer, but, but just listen to that. Listen to the whole essence of that question. Process take to submit actually pass some sort of bill to pay NHS workers more opposed awarding them an extra bonus to pay an act of gratitude for actually putting their lives over do they need bonuses or they need respect with a good package good housing no pain of parking exorbitant rate so they can just feel free go to work and don't have to worry sorry there's a good there's a nurse i know and she comes down and says, oh super i'm so stressed i got another ticket again i got another ticket again <laughs> sorry yeah. well no i think that you know it as i said to one it's it's all of those things in the round the, 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 you know the, the nhs workers you know people like my wife you know they don't want a bonus um you know this isn't you know a bonus for doing a good job we, yeah. they do a good job every time a patient comes in and needs their and needs their services right so you know what, what they really need to be done is for them to be awarded and to be treated and to be respected for the work that they do day in day out people are going to the nhs don't do it um, initially for the money. I mean, my wife hasn't gone in there over these 30 years and done it for the money. If she, you know, she wanted to, she could have gone into the private sector or gone and done something else. But she's committed and given 30 years of her of her life working for the NHS for not for not very much money. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, that's the sort of thing we want them to be appreciated. But also, we want them to have a standard of living that actually allows them to to be able to go off and, and, and do the do the other things that they want to do without having to feel pressured that they, they can't afford. So, yeah, yes, provide them with um, appropriate housing. Allow mm -hmm. them to park without having to pay. Um, you know, give them the respect. Give them yes. the equipment and the clothing they need. Show them show them that we really do stand stand shoulder to shoulder with them, not just pay lip service when there's a crisis. Yes. Well, I I'm sure nurses um, will appreciate this. And uh, the NHS will appreciate this medical doctor, as I have a doctor that comes on regular, um, Dr. David Burton, will appreciate this as much as possible. Any last word, Anthony, and the encouragement of the... the, the yeah, well, I think the last word is um, really, if those of, um, those of your listeners who are, uh, who are on, on, the, on the call or on, on the, online now, please, if you wish to support the petition, um, Silborn's gonna provide a link, please do uh, sign it, please do share it with your friends, uh, your councillor, your MP, uh, if you know any particular celebrities that you can forward it to on your Twitter or other social media um, outlets, please do that. And let's hope that, uh, you know, through your efforts, we can actually get this annual day uh, to come to fruition. Indeed, indeed, definitely. And and, and as in the last word of, of the, what the, the petition actually, let me see if I can go back to there to the petition. I did post the link already, so you can actually pick up that link. Um, Let's go back there. Please help by signing so that we can publicly show our support and gratitude for the sacrifices they have made on our behalf, not just in terms of time and effort, but also for those who sadly lost their lives in trying to save and care for others. A recognized day will mean we'll never forget what key workers do for us. And I like what you did at the end um, you said key workers because key workers, Anthony, is a key word that encompasses the NHS as well, isn't it? The key workers. Well, it is. Yes. It, you know, they are the key workers. And I think, you know, you, you nicely summarised what it said at the end of the petition there. And, you know, that's what we want to try and do. We want to recognise them. We want to appreciate them. And we also want to we want to we want to make sure that they're awarded um, accordingly. But more, but more importantly, make sure that they get the respect and recognition that um, perhaps I feel is long overdue. But more importantly, now that we've got that, um, uh, you know, that momentum going, let's keep it, let's keep it going forward and see this thing through. Fantastic. Sir Anthony Francis, thank you very much for coming on. And ladies and gentlemen, of course, if you want to hear more about Anthony, um, 
on YouTube, Facebook. I have a show with him where we discuss some of the five key tips in successfully working from home. Of course, many people are, as a matter of fact, you're all working from home. Everybody's working from home. You cannot go anywhere. You're busted. I mean, the other day I was walking past your house and I said to my wife, I'm sure Anthony's in. Let's check if he's in. He should be in. We knocked on your door. Of course, we applied our social distance because he's my neighbor. He just lives on the corner there. <laughs> You know, but um, he, he, there's five tips on business and life. One of my show, which I've created specifically for for this time, whereby we look at different tips as to how persons can go through this, engaging their dream. And the key thing what Anthony talked about was um, working from home successfully. And of course, Anthony, let me plug your book. Um, he's got this book, Think and Do It Now. Think it, plan it Think now. It. Think it, tell us about the book, Anthony. Think it, plan it, no, you guys need to get this book. Go on. Um, okay, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so <laughs> think it, plan it, do it now. Really, this is the book um, for those people who simply want to actually achieve their goals and take action. So it's a, you know, it's a no, it's a no fluff. It just simply tells you, it, as it says on the tin, how to think creatively, how to plan and how to execute and actually, actually how to actually go about achieving the goals that you want. So it mm. takes you through a number of steps you know, through commitment, through, you know, how to actually plan your day, how to actually overcome overcome things like procrastination and um, and how to stay motivated. So uh, you, you can get it on um, all platforms like um, Amazon on Kindle on, um, and also a, a hard copy of the book. And uh, if it's something that you particularly enjoy, uh, again, you know, in terms of wanting to achieve your goals and take action and you want to get things done, that hopefully will be one of the books that I would um, recommend that you that you that you buy. And one one last thing I would say on that: yes. if you do buy any of these self help books, make sure that they are self help and not and not shelf help. Don't don't buy them and put them on the shelf so that they so they become shelf help. The whole idea is that they are self help. They you know take action from the books and implement um, some of the things in there, and, and you'll actually see some benefits from it. Well, actually, some of the books are decor. People like to use them to background. Um, images, isn't it, Anthony? Still serves a purpose, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, thank you so much, Anthony, and uh, that is great. And um, listen, we, we'll catch up again another time. And thanks for this um, this petition and, and the service it, it has been doing to raise the awareness for the key workers at this time, for the NHS and key workers. And of course, I have to incorporate into that at the same time. The supermarket because when i go to the supermarket and i see the cashier there they're actually doing a service they've been keeping us fed <laughs> you know well yeah i mean the, the, the supermarket the shop assist you know the, the all those all those individuals that we've already just mentioned um who we now deem as being essential when we go out and who are actually there when we need them they are the ones who are in the front line um you know and and it, it's it's easy to sort of take for granted the road sweeper and as well as you know, somebody who we see day in, day out, but we, we take it for granted. But if, if that individual wasn't there cleaning our roads day in, day out, guess what? We'd soon realize it when, you know, there was a whole load of rubbish um, suddenly appeared. So I think it's just it's just a recognition, Selborne. Yes. Um, these individuals, plus the NHS and the carers, as I mentioned, you know, at, at, right at the beginning, these people now, their time has come where we have to stand up and say, you know what, we, we perhaps have forgotten you, but we're not going to forget you now. And you know the clapping once it stops we will still we will still be there for you so ladies and gentlemen clap for N nhs and we know what next not what next we know what ne next okay peace out anthony thank you so thank much you. okay bye bye thanks okay uh ladies and gentlemen you can hear me still i want to thank you so much for coming on and thank you for those who are on instagram as well much power to you I'm, I'm, on Instagram. Let me know if you actually been hearing it and if you actually captured it without seeing Anthony. You can always watch it on Facebook and on YouTube after which I, which will be uploaded. And uh, and just to sort of um, give a little plug for the business and lifestyle show uh, live, um, which is weekly. Next week I've got uh, Miss Nicola Millington. Um, I've got Aaron Branch from Staffordshire, and then also I'm getting. Um, a good friend who's an anchor from Canada to talk about what is going on in Canada. One of the exciting shows which I'm building up now is one about masks, all these different masks. There's some funky masks which is out there. I'm going to get somebody from USA, Jamaica, and the UK out there actually doing it because even I saw someone with a mask that fits with their hat. 
I mean, that was awesome. Really funky. There's high high end mask, you know, as well because in Jamaica, for argument's sake, it is now compulsory mandatory to wear mask. So so that is very interesting. So uh, I'm looking forward to these sort of creative opportunities and creative shows. So if you know anybody that is creating masks, just hook them up if anything. In um, tell them to email me uh, silverntv at gmail.com. I just put that email there, silverntv at gmail.com or just or just simply uh message me if anything as well let me hear your views as well in regards to what Anthony discussed today about nurses about the key workers and about the petition um the petition will be posted it's posted already there you can get it um, on instagram you can check it um later i'll be doing that so i want to thank you so much and remember to like and share this video just share it uh, create watch parties as well if you believe it is something which is beneficial and it has given value uh, one of the things that i want to do as much as possible is to give value with my shows so therefore persons can actually leave um supercharged in some way and that is the essence of some of the show which is going to happen uh look out very soon for an uh, interview with chris tufton the minister of health in jamaica and of course i want to get the the high commission of jamaica to confirm uh when he can come on to sort of discuss some aspects of uh, Jamaica and links with um, what is going on in Jamaica as well. Okay, and as for the YouTube, subscribe to it and touch the notification bell. All right, so on Facebook, I wanna thank you so much and I'll have a good night and peace out. And thank you guys for all coming on as well. Pitch me with the topic for the next show and I'm in. This is somebody, Trish McClure, wanna get in the show. Okay, let's talk about this after. Shani and everybody, okay, bye-bye, thank you. <laughs>